So the next thing I want to talk about is channel structure or just how many intermediaries you should have in the channel. We talked before that the absolute minimum channel is a producer and a consumer. That's called a direct channel. Um, we see this a lot in the B2B business to business market space um, because we talked about business customers tend to have larger sales volumes so it would make sense to buy directly from the factory. Uh, when Ford is ordering tires um, that need to go through a distributor they can just talk to Firestone and send us the tires that we need. Um, also, and this is again part of the digi digital revolution, we're seeing a lot of online businesses um, where the uh, online business uh, eBay is direct to the customer. Um, um, a lot of uh, startups, the Kickstarter type things, or people starting to, to find a market for products online, it's relatively ex inexpensive to set up a market space. And uh, because there's no intermediaries, you can uh, maybe find a, a market for your product. And actually, this is a strategy that a lot of uh, people who have new product ideas will take is develop the product, sell it online to get a track record for the product, and then once I've shown that there is demand for the product, that customers are willing to pay a price for the product, then I can start looking for retail distribution, and rather than saying, I got a great product, you can say, here's a product, and I can demonstrate how this might make money for you. Uh, more common is an indirect channel that includes intermediaries. Um, in the consumer, we call them retailers or wholesalers. Um, in the business-to-business -business realm, we call them uh, distributors. So one of the issues in channel structure is how many channels you should have. Um, dual distribution is where you have more than one channel of distribution for your product. Um, the good news is it avoids dependence on one channel. Uh, the bad news is that if you have multiple distribution outlets, then the, 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 the channel partners in one channel might feel com competition from the channel partners in the other channel and not be willing to give your product the support that they might otherwise give it. Um, so more commonly, it would be appropriate to have channels according to market segments. For example, in uh, automobile parts, they have OEM and aftermarket. Uh, OEM is original equipment. Aftermarket is for the replacement market. Um, and the idea is if I am selling spark plugs, I would have one distribution channel to the automobile manufacturer's original equipment where they're buying it by the truckload. And then I would have an aftermarket distribution channel where I'm working through retailers so that people can go to auto parts stores and get the, the parts that they need at the time that they need them. Um, yeah, so OEM versus aftermarket. Another way of, of, of handling dual distribution is large customers versus small customers, um, national accounts versus retail accounts. Um, so when, when I was working in furniture is the large national accounts we would handle directly from the factory, um, and then we would work with um, independent reps to call on the smaller accounts uh, just because that was a more efficient way to manage the, manage the market. And then we're seeing more and more blended distribution. Um, there's a buzzword now in, in marketing. It's called omnichannel marketing. Um, and omnichannel marketing just recognizes that in today's digital world, people don't just go to the store or don't just go online, but there are any number of methods, devices, channels that people can use to find information to buy products. And the idea with omnichannel is let's integrate all of those different approaches to the product so from the customer's perspective, it's a seamless experience. Um, so for example, if I go to the, the advantage of a physical distribution or you know, a, a, a physical store is that people can actually go to the store, they can have the social experience, um, people like to discover things so you can do the shopping and, and, and they're trophy hunters, people looking for the great deals, bargains. And that's an important experience for some folks. Um, the disadvantage is stores have to close and there's a limit to the amount of inventory that stores can handle. So having a parallel online presence um, takes advantage of the fact that the internet's available 24 seven 
and you can take advantage of what they call the long tail is in terms of the amount of products that you carry in a physical space you're limited to only products that can have a turnover that would justify carrying them once you're in an online space you can afford to carry products that you might only sell one or two of but from you know profitability isn't all that great but from a customer perspective you're able to offer pretty much anything the customer wants so again working together I have the physical store where I can go in, shop, touch it, see it. I have the online store that I can wake up 3 o'clock in the morning and touch it, see it, and then work together as I might order online, pick it up at the store. I might go in the store, have my phone out, and be looking for product information while I'm in the store. Again, omnichannel marketing is just recognizing that customers are going to have different ways of approaching the product. If we're aware of all of those different ways that they can approach the product and make them all part of a seamless experience, it can be a much more powerful um, relationship with the customer than doing it otherwise. I remember years ago I bought some exercise equipment and from a store that is no longer in business recently. And I shopped in the store and I saw the, the piece of equipment that I wanted and I went to their online website and they had the exact same piece of equipment. It was like several hundred dollars less expensive. So I bought it from their online website and then had an issue with the product and I went to the store and I said, I'm having an issue with the product. And they said, well, you bought it online. That's a separate division. That's not us. Uh, that's not the way it works. <laughs> There's no brand, same brand. For the customer, you can't expect me to understand that you have different ownership structures. They're out of business, out of business now, yes. Um, and rightfully so. <laughs> Took them a couple of years, but the Robertson curse got them. <laughs> you do not want to make me mad. <laughs> so the other thing I want to talk about channel structure, and most books that I have looked at, they talk about channel structure as if getting it was easy. You know, choose the partners that you should be working with. Make sure that the partners are a good fit with your strategy. And sometimes it's hard just to get a retail partner. Right now, um, it, when we talk about retailing, which we'll talk about shortly, it's a highly concentrated market where there's a small number of retailers that dominate the market. If I want to get retail distribution, um, what's in it for Walmart? And so it's not so much what's best for me, but I have to understand that the channel partners need to make money too, and I need to demonstrate that everybody's going to win by carrying my product. 